Hello, and today I will be discussing some uh, mathematics around the Rubik's Cube and other twisty puzzles. Um, so, first off, I'll be uh, making some definitions and some assumptions we'll have to make in this video uh, because I won't have time to prove everything. And then we'll discuss some things about uh, repeating algorithms until uh, we reach a state E or an algorithm that does not affect the cube. So for example, R U R prime U prime. If we repeat that six times, the cube returns to the same state. Then I will go into some discussion about commutators and making algorithms using the form x y x prime y prime y prime and how these can become useful so let's start off with some basic uh, assumptions and definitions we're going to make first off I'll take another cube because I don't want to pop open this one and we define a corner as a three-sided QB. So a QB with three sides, whereas an edge is a QB with two sides. So this is an edge, this is a corner. And the corners go on the outside parts, while the edges go in the middle. The center pieces here, here. So basically the whole cube is made up of corners and edges as you can see except for one piece which is the center here and notice that no matter how many times you turn the cube the center never moves so the center is an unmoving piece unless the center has a picture on it which I'll discuss later So now that we've defined uh, centers, edges, and uh, corner pieces, let's go into the layers. So a layer is one thing you can turn. So there's three layers on the cube. One, two, three. Okay, and just the stickers on one cube is a face. So these white stickers would be... Excuse me, uh, one face, whereas the actual physical pieces in one layer in that uh, in this slice would be a layer. Uh, so let's go on to some stuff about repeating algorithms. As I said before, many, many algorithms, if you repeat them over and over, they will eventually return to the same state they started with. Uh, so, we have cube notation, right? Like, like F would be a clockwise front side turn, or U2 would be that, right? So, there's actually a move called E, and E stands for the empty move. So, E does not do anything. And we also have an assumption that if we do the move E, and then do the move X, uh then the move X will always have the same result as uh, if we just did the move X without the move E. Now, it sounds pretty obvious because E is an empty move, so you don't really do anything to the cube. Um, but, say we have our R U R prime U prime uh, algorithm, right? If we do that six times, that would equal E. Right, because it 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 nothing's happened, and then we do say like our x move. If x were r two, we would do r two, right? So then it wouldn't be really as obvious because we're actually doing moves for the e move. So in this case, we would say r u r prime u prime, sorry, r u r prime u prime times six equals e. Now, ah. Uh, but let's try an example. Uh, so sometimes when we 
repeat an algorithm. It takes a long time for the algorithm to come back to the solve state. And we began wondering how many times we're going to have to repeat the algorithm. And there's actually a pretty simple way to find uh, the number of times we have to repeat an algorithm. So say we have the repeating algorithm RU. That's our repeating algorithm and we keep doing it hoping our cube will be solved. And this algorithm actually takes a pretty long time. Right? So, the easiest way to see how many times this is going to take is see what the algorithm does. So we go RU. Right? Now let's see how the pieces have moved. First off, the permutations of the pieces. Uh, firstly, we see this, this corner, the orange, uh, green, white, has not moved. It has changed its uh, orientation, but the permutation has not changed. See, it was there. And now it's there. It's still there. Now, the yellow, orange, green piece has moved up to here. Here, I'll just take a solved cube to make this easier. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this piece was there and it moved up to there. The piece that was here moved to here. The piece that was there moved to here. The piece that was there moved down to here. The piece that was there moved to here. And that piece moved back up to here. So as we can see, the corners are in a 1. Because this one isn't in the cycle. But it's in a 1, 2, 3, 4... Uh, let's see, no. One, two, three, four, five. It's in a five uh, corner cycle. So, but uh, they, they aren't necessarily oriented, but we'll get into that later. The permutation cycle is one, two, three, four, five. So if we, if we repeat this algorithm five times, that means all the corners will come back to the right place. Because, say, for an A, A permutation, if you use a CFOT uh, solving method, this, these corners are cycling around. And so we've cycled it once. If we cycle it again, it's like that. And if we cycle it a last time, and it should be solved, right? Because it's a three cycle. So we repeat, repeat it three times. In this case, it's a five cycle, the RU algorithm. So if we, if we repeat it five times, it should solve all the corners permutation-wise. So let's try. One, two, or sorry, one, two, three, four, five. And we see the cube. And indeed, all the corners are permuted. So that corner is in the right place. 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 That corner is in the right place, and this corner is not affected in the cycle. However, we notice that A, the edges, we don't know what the edge cycle is, and B, the corners are not oriented. So let's just go back and find out what the edge cycle is. We go like this and look around, and firstly we see the edge that was here, the, uh, the orange green comes to here. That edge goes there, the blue edge goes there, right? Um, the red edge comes here, the green edge goes there, this edge comes down here, and this edge comes here, and that edge uh, repeats the cycle again. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven edge cycle. So that means if we repeat this uh, algorithm seven times, all the edges should be per uh, should be permuted for sure. Um, yeah. 
So let's try it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven times, and we see that all the edges are permuted. But we got we also see that every every edge is also uh, oriented correctly. So we know that R U times seven is an algorithm that uh, will keep all the edges oriented and permuted only affecting the corners right because the corners aren't solved but we also notice that if we repeat the RU algorithms times five we get all the corners permuted so if we if we do uh, if we do RU times L where, where L is the LCM of the uh, numbers you have to repeat number of times you have to re repeat the other two so in this case seven and five right the, the LCM is 35 so if we were to repeat this algorithm 35 times then all the corners and all the edges should be permuted so let's go back and try again one two three four five six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, oh, that was 35. And we do, we of course see that all the edges are solved and all the corners are permuted. However, there's one problem. Corners aren't oriented correctly. So, um, this is the first time the corners have come back, uh, have been permuted while the edges have been solved. Other times, only corners were solved, only edges were solved, or n uh, none were solved. Right? So, uh, this means that R U times 35 does not change the permutations of any piece does not affect the orientation of the edges as we see but only flips corners right in one direction so this means we, we, we make an assumption that if we use an algorithm to flip a corner if we flip it one um, or sorry it, it's flipped that way so if we flip it one Two more times, then it should come back to the solved state. Same with any other corner. One, two. It comes back to its solved state. Right? At least for this algorithm. So, what we know now is we need to repeat an algorithm that flips the corner three times for it to come back to its uh, regular orientation. So, RU times 35 flips one corner or each corner once except for these two because it's a two gen algorithm two generator are you um yeah uh so it doesn't affect these faces but we know that are you 35 flips corners so if we if we repeat it three or two more times since we've repeated it once for a total of three times it should solve all the corners as the orientations will be corrected. We also remember that RU35 does not affect the edges at all. So the edges will still remain solved. And they do not affect the permutations of the corners and will solve the orientations in, on the third time. Which means the cube will be solved uh, when we finish RU35 times 3. So 35 times 3 with some quick melt mental math is uh, 105 so we have to repeat this algorithm 105 times and I'll just count up uh, since we've done 35 already I'll just count up to uh, 70 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. 
Notice how the corners are still oriented and have been flipped one more time. Because this used to be there and now it's flipped to there. Same with all the others. So 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, or 105, and we see that the cube is solved. Okay, so let's go on to some other twisty puzzles. The 2x2. Two two. Okay? So, uh, um, oops. We see that if we were. Let's try repeating that same algorithm on the 2x2. Two two. R U. R U. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. We only have to repeat it 15 times, but why? On the 3x3, three three, we repeated it 105 times, but on the 2x2, on the two two, it only takes 15 times. Uh, what we have to remember is the 2x2 two two is basically a 3x3 three three without the edge pieces, so minus these pieces. Because if you see, if you take away those pieces, you get four corners. Four corners, right? Like a two by two. Here. Um, I'll just use this cube. If you take away the edges, you get a two by two, right? Like so. So, let's see what the RU algorithm does on the 2x2. Two two. You go like that. Let's go like that on the 3x3. Three three. We see that we have the same five cycle uh, of corners, right? Uh, so, this is an affected. What was here comes here. What was here goes there. What was here goes there, what was here goes there, what was here goes there. So one, t one, two, three, four, five, right? But we have no edges. We don't have the seven cycle of edges. So that means that the corners, um, we, we only have a cycle of corners, right? So it's a five cycle. So in, we, we, we don't care about the edges because we have none. We only care about the corners. So, five cycle of corners, every, every five times we repeat it, the corners, the corners should be permuted again. So let's try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, oops, five. And we do find that all the corners are permuted, but wrongly oriented, just like we did on the three by three. One, two, three, four, five. Right? It's the exact same corners. Um, however, we know that if we repeat a corner twisting algorithm three times, it should, it should orient the piece again, right? This is exactly the same as what we did on the 3x3. Three three. So if we do this again, we also know that RU times 5 on the 2x2 two two does not affect the permutation of the corners, only the orientation. So if we repeat RU5, uh, two more times for a total of three times it should come back to its original state and five times three is fifteen so we have to do RU fifteen and that's why we have to repeat only fifteen times let's go ten more one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and we're solved and so now we we will be discussing something called uh, commutators and a commutator is a type of algorithm, um, and an algorithm is obviously a series of moves that brings a desired result. A commutator is an algorithm in the form with moves x, y, x prime, y prime, 
where x and y are any series of moves and x prime and y prime are consecutively the uh, inverses of x and y and sorry it's a bit loud because there's renovations in my apartment but uh, so basically with commutators we can uh, make up our own algorithms on the spot which is really useful for blindfolded solving uh, so we can customize our algorithms depending on which case we get but anyways um, the commutator uh, idea is basically uh, based on the fact that if I do the sexy moves algorithm, if I do the inverse of that, like that, if I inverse the moves or do the opposite, right, then, uh, like, if I undo the moves, then it will come back to normal, right? But if I were to do, say, that, right, and then change the bottom layer or something that would be so uh this would be my x move and then that would be my y move the y move uh basically changes uh the cube a little bit so that when i do the inverse of x it doesn't just come back to solve the cube it actually does something which is what an algorithm is supposed to do so uh and then i do my inverse which is x prime and then I do y prime because y was d, so I do d prime, and we get this. Uh, we just cycle uh, these corners without preserving the orientation. So that was a pretty customized uh, commutator algorithm used. And to undo that, we just do the inverse of the commutator. Uh, say we have. Uh, let's make another commutator. Um, let's just say, uh, we, let, let's say we do this, uh, just a simple algorithm, r u prime r prime for, uh, x. Then for y, we could do something like d. And remember that we, for simplicity, remember that x, right? Should on, shouldn't really affect the bottom layer. It only affects basically one piece most of the time. Or if you do an M turn, two pieces. But it shouldn't affect the bottom layer that much. Uh, that's just the easiest way, uh, sort of format to make commutators. So we do that. Now we do D. And I call Y, uh, This that, that was the Y move because we just did the X move, right? That's the Y move, D. And I call the Y move the modifying move. Because without Y, so let's say we didn't do Y, we did X. Now we have to do X prime. If you do X prime, nothing happens. Right, so we have to do Y. Y, let's, let's do D. We do X prime and Y prime. So we've again cycled the corners similarly. Except, without preserving the orientation except... Uh, this is what's great about commutators. They have a lot of different uh, uses. We see that this is actually an F2L case, right? This is a possible F2L case that could happen when we're solving the first two layers with the Friedrich method. And if you can't solve a cube, then ignore this, or if you don't know the Friedrich or CFOP method. But anyways, instead of just solving this pair like that, um, oops, Okay, I'll do that again. But instead of just solving the pair normally, we could use the commutator trick. Uh, and I'll get back to that commutator. But, uh, okay, so we do that algorithm again. Instead of solving the pair normally, like that, right? Um, instead of solving it normally, we can use the com reverse the commutator, right? And, uh, do that and just solve it, right? And that's basically solving solving the um, OLL at the same time, orient last layer. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty useful because we do Y prime. Well, the last move is Y prime, right? So we do Y or a D, and then the second last move is an X prime. So we just do X R G prime R prime, and then do we do O? Y prime, because Y is the third last, and then um, we do X prime. And yeah, that's pretty useful.
Now, uh, I won't really go over many commutators. I, I, I just gave you the basic idea. I really recommend going to Bad Me Fisto's uh, video on this. Uh, and I'll post them links in the description box for good uh, videos on commutators or uh, forum posts, etc., etc. But I will introduce one more idea to commutators, and that is the idea of a setup move. So sometimes you have a case like a scramble or whatever where it's hard to apply a good commutator without messing up or or you can't really apply a useful commutator at all. In that case we use something called conjugates. And basically a conjugate is this uh setup move for a commutator. Like um say this edge was flipped and uh this edge was flipped. Which is actually possible. But um anyways that's aside the point. Uh it's sort of hard for me to apply a commutator without rotating a lot, such and such. So a conjugate, basically, uh, like I could go more in depth on this, but a conjugate would be something like that, which would bring set up the pieces so I can just use a commutator more easily, or like that, so they're right near to each other, so I can use a commutator more easily. Um, so I've been showing you uh, mostly permutation, uh, permutation, con uh, sorry, commutators, which move pieces around. But uh, you can also do orientation commutators, which uh, like flip the orientation of pieces. These aren't as useful because they're really tedious and they get long, and they they don't do much at the same time. But uh, they're still useful to know. So say we had uh, this case, or no, we don't want that. Say we had uh, this uh, orientation case. To solve this orientation case, we can use, uh, first off, uh, the way you solve an orientation uh, commutator, with a commutator, is you try to get one orientation piece in place. So in this case, we want this piece to be there. So we take it out and use that algorithm to put put it back in R, U, R prime, U prime, R, U, R prime. Okay, and let's remember that for the future. Now we do our Y move. In this case, we want to solve also that. So we bring it up to the, where where the other piece was, that position. So with a D and then we reverse what we did. So R, U prime, R prime, U, R, U prime, R prime. And we reverse the Y move, so Y prime. And then our OLL is solved. So based on that principle, we can do a lot of stuff with commutators and conjugates. Um, this can be applied into blindfolded solving. Uh, like say we had this A perm, right? A permutation, so we want to cycle these corners. Um, we could do for our x, this is pretty long, but f prime, d prime, f, r prime, d2, uh, d2, r, f prime, d, f, right? Um, and that basically switches these two. Now, if we did, uh, Oops, I did it on the wrong side. Oh, uh, here. Uh, uh. Okay, try that again. Because uh, I do commutators with whatever I'm switching on the bottom side for uh, corner, corner cycles. So this is a three corner cycle. So we would do, um, let's see, what would we do? I think this is it. F prime, D prime, F, R prime, D prime, R, F prime, D, F. Oh, let's say, yeah, let's say we wanted an A perm on, A perm on this side, okay? Now we would do uh, U. And guess what? Because this algorithm s switches these two pieces, right? So if we go like that, it'll switch these two pieces again if we undo the algorithm. So we undo the algorithm, F, 
d prime f uh, r prime d2 r f prime d f right and then we see that we actually have an a perm on top of here and I'll just undo this because it's confusing yeah we see we got an a perm on top of here so basically that was uh, some basic stuff on commutators and I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I I'm assuming it helped you and yeah thanks